Hi, I'm Jackie Salaji, the head of operations at FN, and you're listening to A Midsummer's Quarantine. This production was made in under a month, without crunch time, by the staff at Faustian Nonsense. We believe that great art doesn't have to come at the sacrifice of great artists. If you like the show and what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and help us spread the joy of well-made art. Thanks for listening. Mustard seed, musty darling. Thanks for agreeing to edit this together for me. I mean, you haven't agreed yet, but I know you'd never refuse me. So thanks. <laughs> it is for a good cause. The best cause, really. You know how nice our place is, right? I mean, it's a penthouse in Manhattan, so obviously it's gorgeous. And you were here for that Halloween party, right? I remember you commenting on the gas stove. Something, something. Plumbing renovations in New York are a nightmare. Something, mm, It was super boring, but you seemed into it. And you know I support your boring interests, heart and soul, Musty. But did you know it's also rent controlled? We've been here for what, 50 years? Oberon was in a deep-cut v-neck and platform shoes when we moved in. So it's been a hot minute. Rent controlled, started in the 70s. You do the math. Tally it up in your head. Got it? Ready? Cut it in half, Musty. Titania was on a streak, all about charming humans out of their wits for fun and profit, not to mention style. I'm pretty sure the documents have a bit of the landlord's drool preserved in the paper. Horrific. But hey. Now, Puck, you say. It sounds like things are great. What could you possibly need my help for? Well, it's Oberon and Titania. You know how they are. No respect for things. Ugh. Remember that time Obi smashed Jimi Hendrix's guitar after Titty slept with him? They scold me. So materialistic, Puck. Meanwhile, they're leaving Dior this and Gucci that on the floor for the cat to nest in. So you see... If I leave them to it, they'll destroy this beautiful, beautiful oasis in their next knockdown blowout breakup. It would honestly be a sin. It'd be a literal crime. But me? I would cherish this place, Musty. I would treat her like the lady she is. So... What I'm doing, uh, what we're doing, sorry, darling, is saving the day, if you think about it. We're going to get this baby the parent she deserves. Someone committed. Someone clever. Someone handsome. That's right. Good old Puck. Mr. Robin Goodfellow. (laughs) Me. Oh, and you, of course. Whenever you get time away from throwing pollen about or whatever it is you do these days. And all I need is a teensy tiny favor. 
<laughs> when Oberon and Titania pack up and leave in a whirlwind of drama, we just need evidence to show that they left. Then once they've gone to weep crocodile tears at the J.W. Marriott or wherever, I'll have the rights as the sole renter. And it's only a matter of time. They're overdue, actually. It's been a month longer than their longest streak without a split. We only have to fool the human courts. They're always on and on about this evidence crap. So I figure I'll record Titty Bell and Obi-Ron until I have what we need. And then you'll put it together to paint a lovely picture of two people breaking up with their penthouse. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Shh. Here comes Obi. The show's starting. Baking? Already? Puck, hey, I didn't realize you were home. Don't we have four loaves in the freezer already? It goes fast with Titania around. Isn't she on a no-carb diet? Oh, is she? That would be so tragic, then, if I had a freshly baked loaf out and ready to be cut when she finishes recording. What'd she do this time? You mean aside from collaborating with 30 other ASM artists? After insisting she preferred to keep her brand a solo thing when I asked? Yikes. Mm hmm I saw her adding and cozying up to the whole community on Twitter. It's like she actually wants to hang out with the humans. We eat them, Puck. It's gross. Revolting. But you're not going to really put human... Bits in the bread, are you? What? Ew. No. Just emotions. But we're stuck at the apartment, so the only source of emotions is... <gasps> oh, you're bad. <laughs> I mean, the timing is perfect. She'll be going live as we speak. Ah... Young people nowadays and their artificial sounds of pleasantry. I remember a time when the greatest aural pleasures could be derived from such simplicity as wind through lush foliage, the soft babbling of a sparkling brook, and the shrieks of the villagers as they awaken to find I've turned their children into mongooses. <sighs> Mongoose? Mongooses? Oberon! Pod. What? Mongooses? I don't know. Honestly, we're lucky we live where we do. There are only so many places with neighbors that broadcast their feelings over the internet. Play. What's Welcome it called back, again? And I can My never Helena, remember. I... What? What's the title? I can never remember. If you listened to the opening, you'd know it was Helena in a handbasket. Play. And I am your host. This is Helena a handbasket. Show. Pause. Helena in a handbasket. Are you done? I could be. I'm trying to listen. Come on, they don't have live episodes that often. I can't concentrate on her and you at the same time. And you know that the bread is best when I know in real time what I'm absorbing. If you have anything else to say, say it now before I unmute it. Like what? I don't know. You ask so many stupid questions. It's not my fault Dimitri is so hard to follow. Demetrius. Oh, right. And that's her brother? No! They're roommates! Oh, my God. They were roommates! 
What's the point of this show, anyway? It's just a reality show. An experiment that got popular. She records her life, and her network, Fair Athens, releases it. And no, I'm not a fan. It's just a really convenient way to feed on their emotions. Exactly what is it about self-quarantining that makes for such fascinating listening? Such emotional energy? Come on, you know what fools these mortals be. It's always drama. Demetrius has it bad for Helena. She likes him back, and she hasn't noticed either of these things, even though it's painfully obvious. It's a classic will-they-won't-they they sort of thing. I remember a 16th century duke and lady that was like that. All pretty favors and glancing looks. Ooh, the chatter of the aristocracy about them was famous at the time. Too bad I turned them all into cats. Good gods, Puck. No, this is a more modern, less Hexen love story. It's more akin to, uh... Ross and Rachel? Yes, except neither of them are insufferable. But that tension, that obliviousness, the aching, it makes a good show. Fair Athens really struck gold on this. And for us, it's really convenient. Because of the food thing? Right, obviously. A steady, reliable diet. Any more questions? Because I'm going to turn it back on and bake the damn bread, if not. One more question. Do the other bakers on your forum think that using magic on your bread is cheating? Last chance. If you interrupt, I'll strangle you. <laughs> Rewind. I'm turning it back on in three, two, one. Play. I'll be silent as a mouse. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Helena in a Handbasket. My name is Helena, and I am your host. This is a podcast reality show where I record three hours of my life every day for y'all to hear. My roommate, Demetrius, and I have been in the same apartment for years now. And uh, as you all know, it's quarantine, so <laughs> not a lot new happening, I guess. Um, well, oh, there's we got the third complaint from the building about Demetrius's roof garden beekeeping. If he doesn't control it better, they're going to make him remove it and... I don't know what happens to the bees when you do that. With my luck, we'll end up with a beehive in our closet. <laughs> so I'm going to have to argue with the management company again. Riveting listening, eh, folks? <sighs> it's just, I could do so much more than this. I'm more than this, you know? I sent auditions to a bunch of audio dramas and zilch, nada, nothing. And I haven't finished off my own scripts yet, so I'm stuck with a stupid reality show. But not, not, not that reality shows are stupid. <laughs> oh God, please don't be offended. I I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be a real script writer someday, is all I'm saying. You know I love you all. This show is like doing daily diary entries, except your diary talks back to you and, uh, yep, right on time. Request nudes in the live chat. I can always count on you, ear per 1972. <laughs> Come in. Hey, what's up? Oh, you're recording. I can come back. No, no, it's fine. It's it's good when you're here. I, I mean, the listeners keep commenting that it's good when you're here with me. When, when I'm recording. <laughs> that sounded way creepier <laughs> than I meant it to. <laughs> well, sure. Anything for ear perv 1972. I mean, you'll get a cut of ad revenue as always. I mean, it's only fair. That's not... Why am I so nervous all of a sudden? Oh. Oh, wait. You want to talk about something private? You do, don't you? Okay, okay. Oh, man. Uh, and here I've basically given you the least discreet introduction ever. Uh, I can pause recording for a second. Hold on. Ugh, I'm such an no, ass. No, no. It's fine. Really, nothing scandalous. I was just ordering some lunch. Was in the mood for a sandwich. Ooh. Macbeth's? The one and only king of sandwiches. I assume you'll be getting your usual? I don't have a usual. 
Yes, you do. Every time you say you want to well, well, I want to branch, branch out, out a little. A little. And, hey! See? And then you cave and get that Elvis-inspired monstrosity. Banana, peanut butter, maple syrup, bacon, and pastrami is a combination, combination we mere mortals, mortals are not, not worthy, worthy to, to behold. behold. Oh my god, does this mean I'm predictable. I'm boring. I'm over. The internet fame will fade away and I'll only be found on Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Do kids these days know about Hollywood Squares? <laughs> I don't think anyone can legally call you boring if you consume that mess on a regular basis. The show reruns and the sandwich. But it's true. I'm boring. Even my double double boil and Elvis is boring. Demetrius, you're too nice to confirm it, but I'm sure the listeners will tell me. They don't have any boundaries, and they all know that you're the real appeal of this podcast. Without your dulcet tones, Fair Athens would have declared her D-O-A. Well, I don't know about dulcet. You think I have dulcet tones? Yeah, especially when you're asking the drizzly delivery guy if he has any coupons. <laughs> you're basically an old-fashioned charmer. An old-fashioned charmer. I like the sound of that. But I'm sure I've got nothing on you. You, as bright, as clear, <laughs> as yonder Venus in her glimmering <laughs> sphere. Maybe not that old. Listen, the PhD in classics has to have some practical application, or my mom will tell me I'm wasting my life again. Promise me you'll edit that out later. <laughs> I couldn't even if I wanted to. But, uh, really, look here. See? Check out the live chat. They think you sound romantic. Wait, live? Since when do you do live shows? Yeah, I don't know, um, a month or so? A month or so? I, I started taking questions to fill some of the airtime. Um, I mean, to encourage community? <laughs> Sorry, guys. What? What's that number right there? That would be the number of folks listening in. You're telling me there are three thousand people listening to us right now yeah whoa hey you all right and they heard me do the voice well ah <laughs> i thought it was good that's not going to be a common occurrence unlike the whole singing when you make pancakes thing there are some habits i refuse to change but you could be the bigger person and decide not to go live when it's happening if that's a poke at my height i won't acknowledge it or respond to it Besides, an entertainer would never turn down such gold. That's showbiz, baby. You're cruel. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Hal, I wasn't trying to eavesdrop early or anything, but you said you were going to be a scriptwriter someday, and that's garbage. What? No, 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 no. I, I got too confident. That came out wrong. What I mean is that you're already a scriptwriter. What? You wrote a script. A script was written. You're not talking about... Grad school. I distinctly remember you writing pages upon pages upon pages about... Um, hmm. Well, hmm. it was called something. Pyramus and Thisbe. Ugh. <laughs> Dude, that thing is terrible. Dude, I doubt it. Besides, it doesn't matter. You wrote it. It is a script. Ergo, you are a script writer. Yes, exactly, Dim Hell 86 That's so perfect. Your fans know you're a script writer, too. <laughs> Our fans. And that's not exactly what they're talking about. It is, too. Look, they've said, these idiots are so perfect together. Oh. Don't stress about it. It's It's okay. It happens when you get a bit of a fan base going, right? Besides, I don't know how many times I have to tell you all, Demetrius is my best friend and roommate. Nothing more. Yeah, we're friends. Anything more would be absurd. Ridiculous. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> gross. Don't be so quick to say gross. <laughs> and now everyone's echoing the sentiment about the scriptwriter thing. What have you gone and done? <laughs> You know, you already have an audience listening. Presumably, Fair Athens is listening, too. What's your point? Why not pitch Pyramus and Thisbe? What, right now? Right 
now. What? If you want to get your pitch in front of a network, what better way to do it than to pitch it live on a network show? If you get a groundswell of support from listeners, you hear that, listeners? Groundswell. But it's not ready. I never wrote the ending. Look. If I can do the stupid voice during a live recording, you can give a pitch to thousands of anonymous listeners. Mm, yeah, you didn't even know you were live. <sighs> I guess. But nope. I know now. Nope, I am not going to do it. Even if And you... if I do it willingly, then you have to do the pitch. Those are the rules. <laughs> I didn't agree to this. This is peer pressure. I am being bullied. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph. Oh. Perfect divine, oh. <laughs> to what wow. my love shall I compare oh. thine eyne? Well. Crystal is muddy, oh, oh, how ripe and show. Thy uh. lips, those kissing cherries, okay. tempting grow. Okay. The world is listening. No pressure. <laughs> Damn it, Demetrius. <sighs> maybe, I don't know, maybe you're right. Maybe it might be a good time for this. I, I mean, I wrote this... Way back before I met you. Most of it, at least. Hermia had just moved to L.A. I'd just moved to New York. And, I mean, it's not a big deal. I know. I was lucky to have my childhood best friend with me through to grad school. But, you know, then she moved. And I moved. And for the first time in my entire life, I was alone. And, you know, right now, all around the world... We are locked behind walls and isolated. We're starting to find the routine in it, to grow accustomed to that ache just under our bones, but, you know, it still hurts. In the darkest hours of the night, when we stare up at our ceilings and try to remember what it was like to hold hands with your best friend, or have your hair braided, or feel someone's breath on your skin. That's... that's when it's the worst. That's... I mean, that's why... <laughs> My stupid reality show is so popular. Timing is everything. But, I mean, trust me, I've, I've been here before. I know this drywall fortress, and I know the madness that comes with it. You won't realize how fragile you've become until the walls are gone. Like, how you don't know how drunk you are until you stand up. I swear, my body turned to glass that year. So delicate that even sustained Eye contact was enough for me to rush back to my dorm. I had skin like spider silk, and I'd never wanted touch so badly, but I also knew that it might break me in ways I'd never been broken before. I wrote this when I was dreaming of love. Of family, of touch, of, uh using my voice to speak to another person again, instead of automated phone trees. <laughs> I guess, all that to say, I guess Pyramus and Thisbe is about love, if, if I had to make an elevator pitch. About a love that saves us from our walls while also threatening to destroy us. About facing certain heartbreak and offering yourself up anyway. It's about how even the agony of a failed love is worth it for that split second over the rainbow. Th then I met you and had a friend again, so <laughs> no more Pyramus and Thisbe. <laughs> I, I told you, it's a bit stupid. <laughs> no, no, not, 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 not at all. It's, I just had no idea. That's really beautiful, Hell. Oh, come on. You're just saying that. I'm really not. Really? Really. So, that's the theme. Don't stop there. Who are the characters? Uh, oh. Uh, uh, well, the lovers are Pyramus and Thisbe. Great name. Thanks. And there's this uh, wall between them. Right, the obstacle. Metaphorical wall? No, no, it's it's a real wall. It's like uh, commentary, you know, on the wall. Oh, Trump's wall. Nah, nah I, sh I should have gotten that. That's on me. It it's brilliant. Political commentary is all the rage in drama these days, and it makes an exciting obstacle. So immigration's a big part of it? Mm, no, I hadn't planned on it. It was just a wall. That 
probably be clever to do, though. No, no, no. Don't pay me any mind. I'm not the writer. You are. I should stop speculating, huh? How do they overcome the wall? Well, they, they don't overcome it. Exactly. Oh. I, I mean, there's like, there's a hole in the wall. How are you going to demonstrate all this in an audio drama? You're the expert, but I can't pick your sound design for a wall or a hole. I, uh, I hadn't thought about it, actually. Maybe Thisbe can just say she's found it. Huh. That mm. could work. <clears throat> she must miss him terribly, being separated. Oh, oh, definitely. They, they miss each other. <laughs> Something awful. At least they can still hear each other over the wall, even if they can't see each other. No, no, I wrote it so that they can't. The wall is very high and uh, thick. Until they discover the hole, at least. Right, which will let them hear each other once it's noticed. Mm, I knew it. You think it's stupid? There are all sorts of logistics to work out, and you know me. I'm all about the details. But details probably don't matter right now, right? For the moment, it's just a spark. It's a beautiful little spark, though. It's something we need to hear. We all need to hear. Especially now. We all need to discover our holes. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Thanks, Demi. I just I just need to figure out how they get around the wall before they both die tragically. They could walk around it. That's brilliant. They could walk around. Hold on, hold on. Let me what, write that no, down. I, I, it was a, j a joke. <laughs> you're, you're writing. You're writing it. <laughs> Maybe just keep that as an idea, but I'm sure you'll come up with something better. No, no, it's perfect. It's commentary on the journey they take to, uh, oh, oh, Hermia's calling. Then I believe that's my cue. Now that this is scripted, it's not. Helena in a handbasket is pure unscripted reality. No, no. Stay put. I've been trying to introduce you to Hermia? Hell, oh my god. It is so good hearing your voice. How is life? Well, I'm here with Demetrius, who would just love to say hi to you. Hi, Hermia. Hi, roommate to my dearest friend who knows I have a boyfriend. N no, I'm not that... Look, look, this isn't my idea. I'm not intentionally trying to... Sa sandwiches. I'm going to go get sandwiches. Mm. I just wish you'd give him a chance. I think he'd be really good for you. You are so oblivious. He's kind. He's thoughtful. He's in a doctoral program for classics. Oh, isn't that so cute? I bet he wears cute little sweater vests and has his belts all categorized by color and width. Yes! He sounds just perfect for you. What? No! He's exactly your type. Look, I love that as an aesthetic. It is super good for him. But hell, come <laughs> on. You know how I feel about Lysander. You don't know what you're missing out there. Sweet guys like Demetrius could totally knock you off your feet. And Lysander isn't exactly, um... You sound like an old lady shouting about suitable matches or something. Uh-huh. And what exactly has Lysander been doing since the last time we spoke? Actually, he found a new muse. He is connecting to the very ingredients of his art. So he has Hold been... Paint. He's huffing paint. Hermia, you can't be serious. It's actually really sweet. He gets all loopy. Once, he tried to eat Cocoa Puffs with orange juice. He's not a teenager anymore. This stuff isn't okay. Oh my god, relax. I don't mind babysitting him through his highs. He spends half of them complimenting me. Babe... Babe, what was it that you said I was yesterday? Babe. Tell Hell what you told me yesterday. Helena, 
bosom buddies, my lady love. To what do I owe the pleasure? Hello, Lysander. Tell her that poetic thing you came up with yesterday. The one about my eyes. Ah, oh, oh, uh, let's see. I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, here it is. <clears throat> Your eyes call my heart. A force of gravity stronger than all the moons of Jupiter. <sighs> That's very sweet, Lysander. Why do you sound like that? Like what? Like all... Bleh. Oh, oh, she was trying to set you up with Demetrius again. Yes! Oh my I mean, I god, you are such a good listener. No, Lysander, I wasn't- No, no, I think it's a lovely idea. Love is something to be treasured. I would never, ever dream of holding you back from some great epic tale. Could you just imagine? All those sweater vests you could cozy up to, and I, desperately trying to win your hand back through passion- I mean, You're- you're saying- You'd encourage her to cheat on you. Of course. How else will I know that at the critical moment, she would still spurn the hands and hearts of all the suitors in the world in favor of mine? Hermia is no less than a goddess, and I am not afraid of a challenge. It's like you've never heard of an open relationship. Pretty sure it doesn't justify a constant cheating contest. Safe, sane, consensual, hell. It isn't cheating. My Lysander thinks it's hot when I kiss other people. He wants me to always follow my heart. And I want the same for him. As long as I'm always his favorite. I can't tell if that's I have always pictured gross. myself the dashing poet knight. I'd swoop in and steal your heart away when you least suspected it, kissing you until you knew you were mine again. Here, then there, and here, and there. And it's gross. The heart wants what it wants. Farewell, Helena. Try to get the stick out of your ass one of these days. Or at least learn to enjoy it. Ha ha. Bye, Lysander. He's the one, Helena. He's the worst, Hermia. You should really learn to open your mind, Helena. But that is not why I called. So, listen, Helena, you know I love you, right? And I love talking to you, but I am also calling you about a bit of a favor. Oh? So, you know I got furloughed, right? <sighs> Day jobs are not the journey I want to be on. But not being on that journey means, well, I haven't been able to make rent. And now I kind of need to find a place to crash. Oh. The, um, Instagram stuff isn't paying well enough? You know I'm not in that for the money. I am inspiring people. Well, I'm, I'll need to check with the network. Fair Athens needs to approve something that'll make that big of a difference on Helena in a handbasket. If it was up to me, I'd love for you to stay over. And I know Demetrius would love to finally meet you in person. Plus, with you being an influencer and all, I'm sure the network would just jump at the opportunity and... You know what? I'll text them right now. Oh, you are the best, Helena. The best. And it would be just you, right? Not Lysander? Oh my god, I could never keep Lysander like some kind of bird. You have nothing to worry about there. He is just such a free spirit. Okay, got it. So you'd be here, away from Lysander, able to meet Demetrius, and you'd be on the show for a while. Yeah, I can work with that. What was that? Nothing. I'm just... I'm excited to be with you while you, uh, you know, while you grow in this journey. It's going to be just like old times. Aw, back when we were little neighbors. Little Helena and little Hermia. Cutest little teenagers in the entire world. <laughs> just like old times. Ah, oh, what luck. A break <laughs> from all this drama. Yes. Is that oh, enough for your lobes? I 
tired as you I feel like I've eaten an entire horse. And I was only sort of listening in. What? Oh, shit! My love! You finished with your riffs! What is that? What is what? Are you kidding me? What? I, I, I really don't know what you... Um... You mean what I was listening to? Oh, this, yes. Helena in a handbasket is live. Was live. But she still probably has half an hour to go before she's done. And we wanted to have it on for you when you got done with the... Uh... Yes, we've only been listening since she started. I know it's Helena in a handbasket. I heard it. But you're a gentleman, right? Who only sampled their energy. And I'm currently hallucinating the two batches of sourdough loaves on the counter. Right? No! He's baked it all into the bread. He knows how much you love fresh bread. Stop helping. Ron. Don't. We're stuck in this apartment, and we have one singular, reliable source of energy. And you've gone and baked it all into the only thing I've cut out of my diet. Don't call me Ron. And actually, it's not just Helena. We have more food moving in soon. Demetrius doesn't count. He's been stuck in limbo about his feelings for years. No, no, I... A hermit's coming to live with Helly, apparently. And probably her deadbeat boy toy from the sound of it. Hermia? Hermia's moving in. Think how sweet Helena's energy will taste with her closest friend around. And her closest friend's boyfriend, whom she hates. Do you genuinely imagine that Lysander won't be joining her? I can't think of anything that would muddy the waters more than that idiot. He won't come. The man is too flighty to stay in one place. He can't even stay with one muse. So... You seriously don't believe he'll be our newest neighbor. That's correct. I don't. Ah, do I smell a wager? What? No, that's a bad idea. I'm in. When Lysander moves in, your sourdough starter goes in the dumpster. <gasps> Ooh, I love it. No boring prize for yourself. Cut straight to mauling the loser. Fine. And when Hermia arrives alone, I get Starchild to myself again. That poor cat hates having to beg to be let out of your room. It wouldn't be such a problem if you didn't insist on keeping your door closed all the time. Food and litter go in my bathroom, and you stop trying to steal her in the dead of the night. The only time when my door is closed. Fine. Don't complain when she's frantically trying to escape your smothering. Nothing says love like separate bedrooms and bathrooms. Shut, Shut up, up Puck. Puck. Fine. We have a deal. And now, if you don't mind, I have some crinkle videos to record for my channel. So maybe try keeping your crunching to a minimum. My listeners don't like hearing you unhinging your jaw to swallow a whole loaf of bread in the background. Oh, no, you don't. You know this is the time of day when I record riffs for my subscribers. All three of your followers can just fucking wait. I have a real following. No one cares about your stupid riffs, Tiddy. What the fuck did you just call me? You heard me. Tiddy. Nice. You, you are just insufferable. Just try and record your stupid crinkles and disgusting mouth sounds. I'm going to be making actual music. Uh. Unbelievable. Puck, watch the dough. I'm going to pile books and towels over our shared wall so I can actually do my job. But of course. <laughs> what did I tell you, Mustard Seed? It's too easy.
This program was brought to you by a network of dedicated artists with creative souls just like just like yours. 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 yours Faustian yours, Nonsense yours, thanks yours, you for yours, your patronage. Yeah. Just like yours.